Mamas, welcome to Mental Health Monday here with Reset and Detroit Moms. Okay, so we are talking about anger today, and I want to start with a story because I find this to be really relevant in a lot of the clients I work with and also just women that I talk to about anger. And so I had a friend last week who I was talking to, and she was telling me about something that was happening in her family that was making her really upset, and she was crying, and she was like, I am just so angry that this is happening, and I want to hit someone. I want to punch someone. I am so mad. And I I replied to her, and I said, okay, yeah, feel that anger. Like, get that anger out. And so I want to start our discussion on anger about just reflecting on the messages that we've gotten about anger, especially as women, and how we're supposed to feel anger and what we're supposed to be angry about culturally, in our families, as kids. A lot of times we grow up thinking that anger is not an appropriate expression of emotion, right? Your kid is tantruming or you were tantruming when you were a kid and you were told don't be angry, stop crying, don't stomp your feet, deal with it, right? And so at a very, very early age, we learn that our anger is something that should be avoided and it's not actually an appropriate thing to show, especially as women. So I just want you to take a moment and and think about how was anger represented in your life and your childhood and your family? What are the messages that you've received about anger? Most of us have been told to shove it down, push it away, and don't show anger. So my friend, who was saying that she wanted to punch something, I was like, yeah, do that. Here's the thing. Anger is an intense emotion, right? You feel it. Anger we feel in our extremities. We feel it in the top of our head, our hands, and our feet. Physically, it entices such a huge reaction. And so it's important to use that energy and do something with it. And no amount of deep breathing is going to get you through really intense anger, right? I love Daniel Tiger. And those of you that have little kids probably love him too. But sometimes it's like, no, counting to four is not going to make me have my anger go away. And so you have to meet anger with the same intensity that you're feeling it in your body and in your mind. So I always encourage clients and friends to meet anger with intensity. So go punch something, go hit something, punch a pillow, yell, scream, stomp your feet. Yes, like I love when kids stomp their feet or they throw themselves on the ground and they're punching the ground. It's like, yeah, get that out. Whenever my three-year-old gets mad, I tell him, okay, go get your anger out. And he goes upstairs to his room and he jumps on his bed. I don't care that he's jumping on his bed. I really do not care. What I don't want is him to push the dog or throw something at the baby. So if he's going to go upstairs and jump on his bed, go do it. And so we have to let go of what we think anger should look like and how we're supposed to control it. Instead, find outlets for expressing anger in a healthy way. The number one most important thing though with anger is that we cannot express it at someone. We, we have to find ways in which we can let out our anger, find, find an outlet for our anger that isn't affecting anyone else, right? So it has to be an own internal process. And that's something that's really important to teach kids, right? Don't yell, don't scream at someone. Yell and scream in your room. The other thing I like to tell people about anger is plan for anger outbursts. So I have a client who's a mom of two young girls. She gets angry a lot. Specifically, she gets angry a lot at her husband. And a lot of times it's right at the end of the workday before she's transitioning to like mom mode, get kitchen, you know, kids ready to eat and all those things. So I tell her, okay, before this transition, find a quiet space, wherever that is, or private space and yell, scream, get all of that energy out. And a lot of times she finds that it's getting energy out from the day, from her employees and her manager, and then also getting out the anticipatory angry anger about how the rest of the evening is going to go. And then she feels so much better. Giving yourself permission to actually like release and explode. We have to let it out. So if you haven't already thought of your own way of managing that like really intense anger, as far as releasing it, not shoving it down, releasing it, 
try on a couple things. I always tell people if you don't have a punching bag, get it. Um, working out is also really great, like a really intense workout if you have the ability to do that. Um, yelling, tearing things, like for kids, we tell them to tear paper. Uh, we also say like take a pen and just like hit cardboard with it. What we don't, again, want for kids specifically is to start hurting themselves. Self-harm is a way in which kids deal with anger and intense emotions in an intense way, right? Self-harm feels like they either are punishing themselves or it's a way to transfer the intensity to a different type of feeling, a physical feeling. And so if you can do the same thing through punching a pillow, punching a bag, yelling, screaming, stomping your feet, that isn't hurting yourself or other people, that is the ideal. Okay, so I want to transition a little bit though into why anger shows up and that irritability. So of course we can get angry when we are just burned out and our nerves are tested, right? I get angry when my kid is yelling at me all the all day for more snacks. And I'm like, I just can't handle this anymore. You are driving me nutty, like please. And I notice that I might want to lose my cool, right? And it's an impulse, it's a reaction. So one of the things that we just we know, and I know all of you mamas know, is that we try to take a breath. Now again, it doesn't mean that you're taking a breath to avoid the anger. It's you're trying to create space between that stimulus and a response. So just taking a breather and say, okay, how do I want to respond to this in the moment? Do I really want to yell? Or can I go into my room and not yell at my kid, but yell at the TV? <laughs> or do I need to go take a walk? Or can I just like let this one go in this moment right now and know that I need to deal with my anger later when I have the time and space to do it? So trying to observe, trying to reflect, trying to step back from our anger before we get into that reaction. But then even on a deeper level, we have to look at what else might be going on below the surface. So a lot of times, and this is something that I really want everyone to know right now, especially as we're getting into more of a scary time, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of like depression, really, with nothing to look forward to into the holidays. Seasonal affective disorder is on the rise this time of year, and even more so this year with the pandemic and the election, is that anger can be a symptom of depression. And the reason for that is, is when you have enough time of having your needs not being met, right? Um, let's say, you know, needs not being met as far as like, I don't feel healthy. I don't feel happy. I don't, I don't feel like I'm able to do the things that I wish that I could have done before or that I've done in the past, feeling alone or lonely, feeling burned out, not sleeping, all of these things lead to irritability. So you have to recognize that sometimes the anger in the moment feels like, gosh, like I, I'm just so mad about this, this specific event. But it's like, wow, actually, have I been angry for a long time? Am I just like low grade irritable? And is that actually depression? because of these factors, right? Needs not, needs not being met, being burned out, being stressed out, not getting enough sleep, frustration. Also, when there's a lot of irritability and a lot of frustration and a lot of needs not being met, we also have to look a little bit deeper from that and saying, okay, there's not been a lot of time where I feel out of control. Like, I don't like feeling sad all the time. I don't like feeling anxious all the time. I don't like not knowing what's gonna happen next. That leads to frustration, right? I'm feeling defeated. I'm hopeless. I don't know how things are going to get better from here. That leads to frustration. I'm feeling a lot of fear and dread and anxiety. That feels like frustration too. So a lot of times we have to take our irritability and examine it a little bit more to say, okay, is there something else going on here? Could this be depression? And do I then need to get help? for this? Do I need to get help to work through my depression or my anxiety? And depression can show up in a lot of different ways. And we're going to talk about that in a couple weeks too. So the other thing with anger is that it also can be something that is a chronic condition relating to something that's happened in your past. So most of us have some type of trauma, a big T trauma or a small T trauma. And that trauma can build up rage and resentment. Something that's really interesting about anger is that there's actually studies out there that says that if you have chronic back pain, it actually can be a somatic experience of repressed rage in your body and that they found that people with a lot of repressed rage 
hold it in their lower back. Kind of mind blowing, right? <laughs> and that if we work on our rage, our embedded rage, right? This is the stuff that we've been holding onto for decades. Then we can relieve some of our pain and suffering in our physical and of course our mental bodies. So when you think about that repressed rage, then you have to examine a little bit further. You have to be reflective. And this is again, work with someone or do it on your, do it through your own journaling, asking yourself, okay, what am I angry about? If I really was to be reflective, am I angry about this comment or that thing that happened or that person treated me that way when I was 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 19, 29, right? Is there an event, an experience, a memory, a trauma that you're holding on to that you're angry about? How does it serve you? How does it benefit you to hold on to that anger? So a lot of times anger is there to keep us protected. We use it as a shield. If I remain angry about this and I'll never let my guard down again, I'll never trust someone again in that way, right? So how does it serve you? How does it benefit you? What do you gain from staying angry about this or towards this person? How is your anger holding you back? So a lot of times anger then shows up as this constant irritability that can lead you to erupt at any time. Or is anger holding you back because you're not able to truly be happy, you're not allowing yourself pleasure and enjoyment, or you're not allowing yourself to create relationships with other people? How is this anger holding you back? And then also asking yourself, can you forgive the person? Whomever that is that you're holding on to rage and anger about, can you forgive that person? Now, forgiveness is a whole nother topic that we can spend <laughs> many, many, many minutes on. Um, and I promise that we'll touch on forgiveness. If you're interested in talking about forgiveness, please message me or you know comment in this post because if there's a lot of you that are interested in it, push it up <laughs> and we'll talk about it sooner. But examining anger in a more macro level and more of a trauma lens because it's really important that we address that rage because we also, sometimes we don't even know that we're holding on to it. It's just something like, I'm always tense or I get migraines or again, that low back pain and taking cues from the body as to how we might be holding on to, again, this, this generational trauma that's resulting in anger or just traumas of our own that then we're holding on to this rage, resentment, bitterment, bitterness. Okay, so just for a summary, <laughs> meet anger with the same intensity that you feel it. So doing some sort of mindful, intentional outlet for your anger look at how you've understood messages about what anger means and how you should be feeling angry through childhood, family norms, cultural norms, etc. And really start to poke holes in that gender differences between what women should be angry about and how they should express anger and what men should be angry about how they should express anger. Mamas of little boys, look at them and say, okay, you know, can I change how we look at how you should be managing anger, right? not just boys will be boys language. Allow boys to cry. Sometimes we need to cry when we're really angry and that's 100% okay. Look at if that irritability that you're feeling, if it's chronic, if it's kind of all the time, that irritability, is it a symptom of depression? Is it a symptom of not getting your needs met, feeling lonely, being stressed out, burned out, feeling frustrated over a lack of control, feeling frustrated over fears? And then lastly, dig a little bit deeper into your anger and say, okay, is there something here related to trauma, experiences, people, a lack of being able to forgive? Dig a little bit deeper. So hopefully you have some tips and tools for managing anger both in the moment and some of that really deep-seated anger. Always love to talk to you more about all of these subjects. Please reach out to Reset anytime you need additional support. We're always here for you, both online or on the phone or in person. Stay safe and good luck tomorrow, whatever side you land on.